Awful Sports presents Get your popcorn or whatever strikes your fancy and enjoy the instant epic adventure, Quest for Patterson. Approved and factually fortified by the Underground Scholars. Six months later, in March 1959, Eddie's crusade resumes. An easy ten-round decision of a young Jack Johnson. Eddie, before year's end, in nine months, reels six more victories four by KO, most notable a 10-round decision over Willy Bismanov. For Markin, the Groundhog Day troll of Zora Foley is once again in his sights, and you guessed it, he runs interference this time via a stinker in a 12-round decision. Foley just jabbed and jabbed, and it was over. Foley, suffering from tonsillitis, cut Eddie's right eye, raised the mouse beneath the left, and built a comfortable lead. Eddie was reduced to throwing Hail Mary punches as time ran out. Lots of wreckage to sift through. For Eddie, the agony of defeat was twofold, his face and his money. With managers like Sid Flaherty, who needs enemies? Manager Sid Flaherty had again arranged for Eddie to get 60% of the gate in lieu of a straight purse, with a guarantee of 15000 going to Foley. In other words, Foley had no risk for his pay, and Eddie's pay had a catch. Markin's cut amounted exactly $14,729.32. The post-fight math says Eddie unwillingly was a fistic masochist paying Zora Foley roughly $270 out of his own pocket for the pleasure of Foley cutting him up and slowing him down on his title quest. For a pinch of salt more, to this wound, he lost at his cow palace home. For Eddie, he knows no other path but forward. For mere mortal to win seven fights in seven months and to be thwarted in the way he was by Zora Foley would be soul-crushing to most men. But Eddie continued in one month on his quest for the heavyweight title. In a little more than a month, in February 26th, 1960, the quest continues with a KO of Billy Hunter. Eddie has two more masterful decisions over trail horses Alex Mittaff and Alonzo Johnson. Some scholars think this was Eddie's best work to this time. Eddie again climbs to number two, fighting the number one fellow member in Custiamato's Breakfast Club Detention Center. 
in a steel cage match per se for a shot at Floyd Patterson with none other than the monstrous Sonny Liston. If Eddie can slay the Goliath Liston in nine months, he will be waiting at the end of the heavyweight rainbow for the winner of the last fight of the Patterson Johansson trilogy in June of 1961 for heavyweight gold. We will watch a couple of rounds to get a flavor for this badly interpreted fight. That's Sonny Liston to the left of your screen in white trunks. He's going to come out for round one with but one thought on his mind, to knock out Eddie Machen and fight Floyd Patterson for the heavyweight championship of the world. Both of these men are in superb physical condition. Machen is 28 years of age and is 5 feet 11 and a half inches tall. He's been described as a perfect fighting machine, using the classic stand-up boxing style with great effectiveness. Mr. Jacobs, the announcer, neglected to mention that our subject here, Eddie, was also dying to get at Patterson. Eddie may have tanked Johansson to get at Patterson, and here is Eddie in almost two years to the day and no title shot. Liston is noted for the amazing power he gets behind his long left jab. Everyone agrees it's the best of its kind since the great brown bomber, Joe Lewis, ruled the heavyweights 25 years ago. Watch Sonny get in four punishing body blows. Those punches sap the strength of any fighter, and a boxer like Machen isn't going to get caught like that too often. Liston is 6 feet 1 inch tall and weighs 210 pounds this evening. Boxing experts consider Sonny, now 26 years of age, as being in his fighting prime. His style is to press forward, always putting tremendous pressure on whomever he fights. Watch Sonny stick out two long left jabs and then step in with a hard left hook. Liston has KO'd over half of all of his opponents with that same dynamite punch. As we get to the end of round one, this excited crowd knows it's in for a great heavyweight fight. In rounds two, three, and four, Liston was very aggressive, carrying the fight to his opponent, but getting hit with sharp counter punches. Here in round five, it's the excitingly powerful Sonny Liston trying to catch up with the clever boxing elusive Eddie Machen. Those long, powerful straight lefts by Liston will distract and hurt any fighter and Machen is going to have to counterpunch over that jab. In the past few months, both Alex Mitov and Alonzo Johnson were outboxed all the way by Machen. The previous year, Machen beat Willie Besmanoff and young Jack Johnson, and with knockout victories over Tommy Jackson and Nino Valdez, Eddie's credentials are quite impressive. In the past five years, Machen has beaten some of the finest heavyweights in the division. Watch Eddie get in with a solid left hook to Liston's jaw. That kind of punch serves notice to Liston he can't take too many liberties with Machen. Each man is trying to take the offensive away from the other, and Machen is surprising a lot of people with his aggressiveness. The men will go into a clinch and Machen will spin Liston, trying to knock Sonny off balance. There's no question now, Machen isn't going to be intimidated by Liston. Mr. Jacobs, as some writers from this time describing Eddie wasn't backing down with Liston. They are at best passing words. You can see Eddie has no clear path to victory. Liston's all-world jab at 84 inches keeps Eddie from boxing Liston. Liston's body punches are keeping Eddie from fighting inside, if he slipped the jab, which he hasn't. Eddie can only hold and hit, 
and do a sad attempt at toughness by trying to spin Liston. The men will clinch and Machen once again will spin Liston out of it. Things are really getting rough in there, and while Machen is known as a boxer, he certainly isn't being pushed around. And that's the end of round five, scored evenly by all three officials. Round six was also an even round, with Liston's aggressiveness being thwarted by the shiftiness of the smaller Machen. Round seven and eight were also close, with Liston having an edge, although finding it increasingly difficult to land effectively on his faster opponent. Machen has been boxing beautifully, taking advantage of every opening to pop in short, effective punches. Here in round nine, Liston advances once again, seeming even more determined to catch up to his man. Liston has stated that he'll fight any heavyweight, any place, any time. He wants nothing more than to fight champion Floyd Patterson. Sonny has the remarkable record of having 21 knockouts in 28 professional fights. It's no wonder that most of the heavyweights don't embrace the thought of getting in there against this blistering puncher. So despite the myth that Eddie didn't back down, Eddie was just living to fight another day. Eddie is backing down once again here. Machen knew after tasting Sonny's power just from the body punches, trying to outslug Liston would be suicide. Eddie would need cuts or a disqualification, which was why Eddie roughhoused in the clinches. So Eddie was more smart than brave in this setback. Watch Liston get in some hard body shots and Machen will pull Liston into the ropes. It's getting plenty rough in there and the referee spots Eddie hitting on the break, which infuriates Liston. Eddie is being hurt on these body shots and has no choice but to hold and push and hope to hit Liston coming off the ropes. Liston was established as a 5-3 to three favorite this evening, and many of the knowledgeable fight analysts thought that the fight would never go the limit of the scheduled 12 rounds. Liston, despite being a type of thug out of the ring, doesn't fight dirty and is a thinking man's fighter despite his reputation to the general public. Machen also is looking for an opportunity to fight Patterson for the heavyweight title. There's no question that a victory over Sonny Liston would establish Eddie as the number one ranking contender in the division. Things get rough again here at the end of round nine, and the round is given to Liston for more effective punching. As you can see here, Liston is not taking the bait. This is the 12th and final round. Watch Eddie throw a hard left hook and slip to the canvas. That was no knockdown. It's very rough in there with the possibility of the winner of this round taking the fight. It's that close. In rounds 10 and 11, Machen boxed marvelously well, effectively avoiding those fast left hooks and overhand rights thrown by Liston. Eddie took both rounds by a slight margin. Liston will step in and land a solid left hook to the body. That's a murderous punch. Many of the fans are surprised to see Eddie still in there, fighting smartly and showing tremendous courage here in round 12. Liston presses forward relentlessly. He wants to knock Machen out, and he realizes that he's going to have to put everything into this final round. Liston will shoot out a left jab, but the speedy Machen will counter with a fast left hook. That's where those lightning reflexes of Machen's are paying off. Eddie will land two left hooks, a right uppercut, and another leaping left hook. Machen is going all out. He wants this fight desperately.
Liston will land some crushing body blows as Machen tries to tie Sonny up. Sonny can crack a man's ribs with punches like that. Machen's performance has been startling to many of the fans. He was always known as a great boxer, but no one expected he would spend any time actually carrying the fight to Liston. Again, Eddie is being smart here. He isn't taking it to Liston. He's hoping to catch Liston coming in, but he is getting hurt with those body punches, and he is clinching quite a lot. But that is all he has left to do if he wants to survive. As the end of round 12 approaches, the crowd realizes that it has seen a marvelous heavyweight contest. The proverbial slugger trying to steamroll an extraordinary boxer. The crowd shows its appreciation with generous applause. Sonny Liston wins the decision and thereby secures his position as number one contender. Eddie mounts the horse of recontention yet again. Eddie wins three. Two quality opponents in Buffet and Mike DeJohn via decision. Buffet being a big puncher and DeJohn a likely challenger everyone had to face. Then a very contested loss to the very skilled Harold Johnson. Many observers had Marshton winning that fight. Eddie was promised a rematch with Harold Johnson but it never came to fruition. Then a failed attempt to fight the mouth that roared, Cassius Clay, never came to be. Eddie was more determined than ever, but needing bigger names to get back to the top. Eddie did just that, making it five straight. Two against top contenders, beating Brian London and Doug Jones. He has a match with another banger, the fast, the furious, big cat Cleveland Williams. The match on July 10th, 1962, just two months before the Patterson-Liston title fight on September 25th, 1962. If Eddie can tame the big cat, he may get first crack at the winner of Patterson-Liston. In the big cat's backyard in Sam Houston Stadium, Houston, Texas, the two vied for the shot at a shot for the title. Tensions and stakes were high. Eddie ranked number two as a contender and the big cat at number five. The fight was very closely fought, but sadly, both fighters were overly cautious. Williams suffered a cut lip and a mouse over his right eye. Eddie, not mocked, but rocked hard in the third and the eighth round. The result in this nail-biter was Judge Ernie Taylor, Williams 96, Machen 96, Judge Earl Keel, 97, Big Cat, 94, Machen, and referee Jimmy Webb had it 96, 96, Uta. <laughs> draw. The draw cast the doubts whether either man will get a title shot. In part three, in the coming episode, Eddie faces his greatest challenge yet from the aftermath of the draw with Cleveland Williams. Eddie upgrades his allies. Eddie campaigns to the ever elusive title belt. So tune in for part three Eddie interrupted or the rabbit strikes back. So please subscribe, click, and leave a comment. Special thanks to all of you from us at Awful Sports, Dennis Moore, and the Underground Scholars. See you soon.